Hi friends, this is Adam Schumacher, a rector here at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in downtown Charleston, back for another edition of Rector's Corner, my first since I have returned from sabbatical, and I'm very happy to have with me today vestry member Fran Sills, who is also uh, very involved uh, and, and a leader in our ministry to neighbors together. That has become an important part of uh, our missions uh, here at St. Stephen's, and we're going to talk a little bit about that wonderful program. Thank you, Fran, for making the time. Uh, could we just begin with you um, uh, telling those listening in, what is Neighbors Together? What is this uh, mission that uh, we're involved in at St. Stephen's? Uh, Neighbors Together is an outreach program that services the greater Charleston area. Um, it started 40 years ago um, in a Lutheran church in North Charleston. And from what I understand, in 1983, they would just, the parishioners would just serve hot meals to whoever wanted one. Well, as it grew, they needed a bigger space, and it eventually went um, to the Methodist Church on the corner of Rivers and Cosgrove, which is right across from uh, the Carta bus station, mm -hmm. which made it convenient for people to um, get the, the outreach services that were being offered. Um, <laughs> From that time until about um, COVID, I guess, um, they were serving a hot meal, uh, home cooked in, in the kitchen in the facility, uh, Monday through Thursday, 1030 to 1230. Um, anybody could come in. You did not need to show any proof that you were in need. Just anybody could come in. Um, that gradually evolved to distributing groceries to those people in need. And then it gradually evolved again to serving, uh, helping people with clothing issues. Hmm. And um, a church in West Ashley uh, kind of oversaw that clothing aspect of the ministry. Um, then COVID hit. They were closed down during that 2020 year, and they reopened in 2021 with um, the best practices protocols. Everybody had to have a mask. Um, everybody had to be vaccinated. Uh, in fact, one of my first jobs there or tasks there was to stand at the door and ask them, are you vaccinated? And if they said no, I had to go through the whole list of questions. Now, I've met a lot of friends that way. <laughs> so um, that was in 2021. Mm -hmm. Today, it is now a um, outreach program that uses a case management model. And um, I, I guess that leads me into my second question, maybe how it might have evolved into this model. Um, what any nonprofit has to do is they have to have accountability. If they want to apply for grants, whether they be private grants or government grant, grants, they have to be able to show that they receive the services and how they distribute the services. And um, that was when the case management model was uh, instituted at Neighbors Together, which was uh, probably 2022. Mm -hmm. So, so this, this was a way for Neighbors Together too to adapt their mission to survive as they were navigating their way through COVID. Yes, absolutely. Um, because, you know, you and I both know that there was a lot of money out there during the, mm -hmm. the COVID years. And mm -hmm. um, they, they saw an opportunity where they wanted to 
receive some of that support, but that support needed an accountability component, understandably so. Um, now, anyone who receives services must register with a case manager at Neighbors Together. And these case managers are um, social workers. Um, we have a couple of interns from the College of Charleston in the um, social program. And the neighbor is interviewed, um, name, address, you know, do you have a social security card? All that kind of information. And then the case manager determines where are you now? And where do you want to be a year from now? So if the neighbor says, well, I'm unemployed and I'm homeless. Okay, what is it going to take for us to work together mm -hmm. so that you can, number one, have the skills to become employed? And then how do we get you in a less fragile uh, living arrangement. So the case management model, I, th I think, is a very good model and a very effective model. Um, Neighbors Together likes to say, it's not a handout, it's a hand up. And, yeah, uh, it's wonderful to see that they're able to meet immediate needs. Um, and, and, you know, there are so many immediate needs, um, but also that they're helping people begin the process of transitioning to uh, get to the point where they don't uh, they don't need that kind of support anymore. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, they still serve the meal, the hot meal, um, Monday through Thursday, um, ten thirty to twelve thirty, and neighbors can eat in the dining room, mm -hmm. eat a meal there and then take a boxed meal home mm -hmm. so that they can eat it at the dinner hour. Um, there is a uh, professional cook on site. Uh, he is an employee, but he, he does wonders with the food that's donated, the food that comes from um, uh, the surplus farm program, government farm program. And, um, you know, he does, he, he makes good meals and um, people can take this meal home. Oftentimes they may have um, a relative or somebody where they are living who may be housebound and they can take one for that person also. Mm -hmm. um, but that that is the the main focus of neighbors together. They are also allowed um, grocery distribution um, once a month on a Wednesday. So again, all done through the case manager. So the case manager says, "Well, you come on the first Wednesday," and they come into what amounts to is a small grocery store set up with shelves and everything. And they are given one of those little plastic baskets and they are allowed to take uh, a certain poundage of, of food, whatever fits in that little basket. And for instance, if the people at home don't like this kind of cereal, they're able to take this kind of cereal. Mm -hmm. um, where do the where does the food come from? Grocery stores donate food. Mm -hmm. uh, government programs uh, donate fresh fruits and vegetables and meats. Um, people who put items in our basket under the last pew at church donate food. All that goes um, into the pantry. And they are allowed to pick what they want as long as it meets the criteria of the, of the weight that they're permitted. 
Um, another thing they're allowed is hygiene, and that's also on Wednesday. And again, people wonder where those toothbrushes and toothpaste that are in the basket under the last pew, they go to the health clinic. And I have to give a shout out to um, one of our parishioners, um, Courtney DuBose. Mm -hmm. um, Courtney is um, a registered nurse, um, has her master's in nursing. Um, she has a very impressive medical resume and she has two little kids. So she's not in the workforce right now, but she goes every Wednesday and she helps people uh, seek out free or low cost prescriptions. Now she doesn't give the prescription, they get it from a, a medical person. And then she seeks out how they're going to get this prescription at the best price or no price. Um, she also counsels people on, uh, now make sure you take your medication this way on mm -hmm. a full stomach, you know, all of the criteria that they may not be aware of, so. Well, it's wonderful um, to see the many ways that um, volunteers can find their way in to be part of what Neighbors Together is trying to do. And as you mentioned, um, parishioner involvement, it leads me to my next question. How long have we at St. Stephen's been involved with Neighbors Together? And, and how did uh, that uh, involvement first come about? Well, Adam, here's where I give you the shout out because <laughs> I watched Rector's Corner during COVID. And at that time, you interviewed the new uh, director, CEO, um, at Neighbors Together. And I, I watched that rector's corner and I said, I think that's something that I would like to get involved in. And I, you know, went to the website, and filled out the application and so forth. Um, and so I personally have been volunteering weekly since April of 21. And um, it's only been within the last year that St. Stephen's um, has wanted to get involved as a parish. And I brought that idea to the volunteer director and she jumped for joy. <laughs> she said, absolutely. Um, so right now we have the second Thursday and the fourth Monday, where I have a team of uh, 29 people who have signed up, expressed an interest. And um, many of these names I got through the ministry fair last fall, hmm. but these 29 people are on my distribution list. And I send out an email um, twice a month, at the beginning of the month and at the end of the month. And my beginning of the month recaps what we did last month. And then I solicit names for people who uh, would like to volunteer in the upcoming month. And we only need about three to five people at, on any one day. So um, people shouldn't feel that, oh, well, I can't volunteer on this day and I can't volunteer on that day. And I say, don't worry about it. You know, we will go, we will have our group as big or as, as small as it is. And mm -hmm. over the year, almost a year that we've been doing this, people kind of gravitate to certain tasks. For instance, I, I am solely in the clothes closet. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked to help in the clothes closet one time. I liked it. I like organizing things, putting things here and there in sizes. And that's just my thing. Mm -hmm. um, we have other volunteers who help serve meals. We have, um, for instance, Joe and Chris Hayes come every month once or twice a month mm -hmm. 
and they work in the kitchen and they chop vegetables. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the meal that's served and they're there chopping vegetables. Um, we have other people who are in um, the clothing inventory. Um, Neighbors Together accepts clothing donations Monday through Thursday from 9.30 to 12.30. And, you know, people come in, they've cleaned out their closets or whatever the case may be, and it's got to be taken out of those big black bags and sorted and inventoried and so forth. So there's lots and lots of tasks for us to do. And um, it's, it's just very rewarding, I think, because in each one of those tasks, you are engaging with neighbors. Um, in the inventory room, there's, there's workers from Goodwill and they have been our neighbors and got a job with Goodwill, and now they're doing that for neighbors. Do, do you have a sense, uh, Fran, on how many people on a weekly basis uh, Neighbors Together services? Do you know anything about those kinds of numbers? Um, they um, Wednesday is the busiest day, mm -hmm. mainly because the neighbor may also be able to do the grocery shopping and the hygiene. So usually about 50 to 75 people on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Now, Monday is a slow day. Mm -hmm. um, the other days, um, you know, I'm going to say 35 to 50 people. Um, they receive clothing on Thursdays. So again, that those numbers may be bumped up, but um, it's 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 nice for me to see personally when I work in the clothing house. I see people who come in, and uh, and I may get twenty five people fam with families. I mean, mm. some people with children are coming in, and. Some of them come in and say, I got a job mm. and I need something to wear to my job. Mm. And I, 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 I laugh and I congratulate them and I say, OK, we are going to get you fixed up. Mm -hmm. And um, it's cute when some of the men say, could you help me pick out a shirt to match these pants? Yeah. And that makes me feel good because they trust me now. I'm, I'm a familiar face and they trust me. And the other volunteers from St. Stephen, who, Stevens, who consistently come, I think they're experiencing the same thing in their areas where they're working. That's beautiful. I, I, and, and the whole concept of neighbors together, neighbors helping neighbors, responding to people in need, um, but doing it in a in a way where volunteers are really able to incarnate uh, what we would see as God's love uh, for, for everyone, but especially those in marginalized uh, and needy places. And uh, I know um, from others in the congregation who have volunteered their time, just how meaningful it is for, for anybody who gets involved. And you've mentioned um, uh, some of the volunteer opportunities, but I am aware um, that you uh, have now begun getting things advertised uh, to, for, for people to donate uh, items on a monthly basis. And you mentioned that that little spot in the back of the church. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the rhythm of, of donations that people can make to Neighbors Together? Um, I'm a firm believer that we all have something to offer. Mm. Time, treasure, or talent. Mm -hmm. And the treasure doesn't have to mean that you're writing a big check. Mm -hmm. um, treasure can be, we need toothbrushes and toothpaste. So when you're in the grocery store or you're in Costco and they, you see that they have a sale on something, mm -hmm. that's, that's treasure. You mm -hmm. get it and you put it in the basket. 
Um, it's, I, I usually ask, um, I work closely with uh, Paula Mendoza, who's an employee, and Lydia Ford, who's an employee. And I'll say, okay, what, what should St. Stephen's focus on for next month? And they usually tell me, well, you know, try this, try this. And that's what I do. I try to limit it. And I also tell people, uh, when you're going to the grocery store, and I don't want to mention a specific grocery store, but and you see they have BOGOs. Every time you turn a corner, there's a BOGO. Buy one, get one. Mm -hmm. Buy one for you. Buy one for, get one for neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff and I usually leave the 11 o'clock service with our arms full mm -hmm. with donations. Um, and, you know, our goal seems to be is get a parking spot that's close by so we don't have to carry, carry all these things too far. But then I keep them in my car, the back of my car. And then when I go on Thursdays, I, I drop them off. Um, I fill out an in-kind donation slip every time I deposit these at Neighbors. And just as a matter of, of record, um, last year, between March and we did not serve July, June and July, so March to December, um, St. Stephen's donated almost $3,000 worth of in-kind wow. donations. That's the soap, the toothbrushes, and whatever else goes in that basket, and that doesn't count the outright financial donation that St. Stephen's makes to neighbors together. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, and I know our, our mission standing committee as well has made some critical investments uh, in neighbors together um, as needs have arisen, but it's wonderful to, um, to see uh, that generosity and uh, when you request items for neighbors together, Fran, that that's going in our e newsletter, the Deacon. I think oftentimes yes. we're yes. we're putting I, I always, yeah. Sunday bulletin as well. Yeah, yeah. I I always send Amanda a note. You know, next month neighbors, we we are collecting these items for neighbors. Um, so it's and, 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 and if, if somebody from the parish is listening to this conversation and and has their interest peaked and would like to learn more or figure out how they can volunteer or plug into this ministry um they can they can reach out to you directly yeah you're 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 the uh you're the contact <laughs> um yep. and um your email I know is in the directory. Is it is it in the the, the newsletter uh, when when I, we when there's requests for donations? I I think so. It's okay. real easy. F J Sills at gmail dot com. Um, and and I invite people who are watching to look at the website for neighbors together. It's neighbors together. One word sc all one word dot org mm. so they've got all that information on the website terrific terrific well fran thank you so very much for um leading this ministry for us at saint stephen's uh thank you for your time if you've been listening in and um have your interest peak please do reach out to fran there are so many ways to be involved in this really important ministry this important mission uh of, of saint stephen's um that that goes along with uh, other missions like our, our our justice ministry, the Charleston Area Justice Ministry, where we're trying to advocate um, for policies uh, to create more equity in our community. This is really meeting some immediate needs, but as Fran said, also helping people begin to take those small steps uh, towards uh, self-sufficiency and keep this ministry and all of our volunteers uh, in your prayers. Um, uh, I'll be back uh, next month for another edition of Rector's Corner. Uh, in the meantime, friends, you stay safe and well, and you keep the faith. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Adam.